the offense produces the way it has the last couple of nights, they just may. Uh, yeah, certainly. I think everybody would take these last couple of nights for the Texas Rangers and what they have done offensively as we take you back to Sunday. Of course, the great powder blues. Adolis Garcia has been on fire. Hit a couple of home runs in that game. The opposite field power, he has shown it so much throughout his brief Rangers career. But overall, the 14 runs, the five home runs, and how about hitting in the clutch? The opportunities with runners in scoring position. The Rangers over these last Last two games, 444 is that average. Doing it yesterday, the long ball, you're seeing them all right there. Jonah Heim with a big one to center field last night. Their young lefty, Taylor Hearn, is running a, a nice little stretch right now. He is, and he's coming off probably his best start of the year. It was five innings, but it was efficiency for Taylor Hearn, and that is what is really important. But we'll take a look at the last two overall and the numbers. There was a pretty big gap between these starts. 11 days for Taylor Hearn didn't matter for him at all. He didn't lose his touch, certainly didn't lose any of that confidence that he brings to the mound so consistently. The fastball was good. You can see some breaking balls there, but how about 10 innings, five hits, and just two earned runs for Taylor Hearn over those last two starts. Look at that smile from Willie Calhoun. Absolutely deserved. We mentioned the slow start to the season, but good at-bats, good contact. He told me the other day confidence was still high. It was just a matter of time, and what a time it was for Willie Calhoun to get that first hit of the season. An absolute no doubter. There is a hit it here sign out there in deep right field that we feel like we're not sure if anybody will ever hit it. Willie Calhoun took a shot at it. What a nice moment for him after all he's been through the last couple of years. And the Rangers now in business, tied in the ninth. Bottom of the third, still 3-1 to one between the Tigers and the Rangers. We we're giving Drew Hutchinson a lot of credit. He's kind of a little bit of a cheater. Watch his <laughs> left knee here. Watch the left knee, the front knee. That's the first thing that's going to move. Right here. Here it comes. It's what we call a balk move. As a base runner, you are looking in at the legs of the pitcher. Watch your front knee. You're going to see it really clear on this one. Where that front knee oh, yeah, they yeah. flinches first. Yeah. And you're taught to do that. All right, Dickey was really good at it. A lot of pitchers over the years really good at it. Where you just want to flex that knee just a little bit because you know that the base runner is focused on your bottom half. He is looking basically for your left foot to come in the air. And as soon as that left foot moves, the base runner knows you have to throw home. And that's what Tavares saw. He saw the little flex of the knee, but it was so quick. And we, we, that was super, super slow motion. Yeah. We're digging in. you got to watch it really closely. And our best view really was from center field, which is mm -hmm. obviously not Tavares' view. And that was really, ex really well executed balk move by Drew Hutchins. It's illegal, but you cannot challenge it. And it happens so fast that most umpires are not going to see it. Good play here by Andy Abanez. We know he had a little bit of an issue in that first inning, but overall so far through a game and a half, I think he's looked pretty sharp over at third. He did a really nice job in spring training for the Rangers, and they certainly have given him the confidence that he can be the guy. And it's going to be important because you look at the Texas Rangers, this club as well in Toronto. There's a lot happening over at third base. How about the total chances on ground balls to third base? Last season, the Blue Jays had the most chances, the Rangers the third most, meaning a lot of ground balls. You need good defense. You always need it, but those two teams in particular really do. And so what do the Blue Jays do? Well, they go out and get Matt Chapman, the best defensive third baseman in baseball, and it matches up well with their team. And they did a lot of work with Andy Abanez, did the Rangers, and now they're ready for their third baseman to take those 370-plus ground balls coming his way this year. Like here, one and one. How, how fluky a stat is that? Like, how much... I went Actually, back. Can you expect that? Well, so I went back and looked at a couple of years mm -hmm. to see. Now, got to remember, too, that the pitching staff is, plays a huge role in that. So you look at your starters, the type of starters that you have. I think with a guy like Dane Dunning, it's really important. Single ball pitchers, ground ball pitchers. Uh, Taylor Hearn, same thing. Like you, look at, you look at your pitchers, go through your rotation, what you anticipate them being, uh, and that'll let you know. Listen, you always want really good defense. We talked about this for years, you and I, with the Oakland A's. Tons of ground ball pitchers, especially in the rotation. Not a lot of swing and miss. And their defense had to be good, and their defense was great. And that's what gave them a chance to win. All that work that Andy Abanez has been doing over at third base, paying off in a huge spot here for the Rangers. This ball dribbled. You knew you were probably going to get contact. Sprinting in on the run. Clean exchange. And the throw was on the money for Andy Abanez.
Yeah, Nathaniel Lowe has been swinging a hot bat as you take a look at Kansas City, Missouri. The Rangers and the Royals underway in a few minutes, but we're going to go ahead and put Nathaniel Lowe in our Shiner Box spotlight tonight because of that hot bat. What he has done here lately has been pretty incredible. Over his last 27 games, he is hitting 327. He's got 14 extra base hits. He's driven in 17, and the 955 OPS really is what sticks out here for Nathaniel Lowe. He has been slugging all over the diamond for the Rangers and often in some pretty big spots. Good news for Nathaniel tonight. He's in the lineup, and he's going up against the lefty. Go back to the beginning of 2021. Since then, he is slugging 444 against left-handed pitchers. That is 11th in Major League Baseball by left-handed batters. And we mentioned the lefty. It's Chris Bubich going tonight. He has really struggled against left-handed hitters. So another opportunity for Nathaniel to prove that he can play every day, and especially against those lefties. When we get back, John Radigan is going to talk about the rest of the Rangers offense and some opportunities available to them tonight. We do it next right here on Valley Sports Southwest.